May I feel, said he. I'll squeal, said she. Just once, said he. It's fun, said she. May I touch, said he. How much, said she. A lot, said he. Why not, said she. Let's go, said he. Not too far, said she. What's too far, said he. Where you are, said she. May I stay, said he. Which way, said she. Like this, said he. If you kiss, said she. May I move, said he. Is it love, said she. If you're willing, said he. But you're killing, said she. But it's life, said he. But your wife, said she. Now, said he. Ow, said she. Tip top, said he. Don't stop, said she. Oh, no, said he. Go slow, said she. Come, said he. Mm, said she. You're divine, said he. You are mine, said she. Hi everybody, Poetry Week this week. I hope you like this uh, little poem that I just read to you. According to scientists, injecting yourself with poetry does not help against any virus, but it's good for just about everything else. So, here we are. The uh, poet of which I just read the, uh, the famous May I Feel poem is uh, the topic of this little video lesson. The man's called Edward Estlin Cummins, um, commonly known as E. E. Cummings, an American poet, also a um, was also a painter. And uh, as you can see on the screen, I um, I call him a, a a poet at the crossroads. Why? Because he was he was this um, transition figure, a transition figure between two uh, major um, cultural artistic movements um, of the 19th and 20th century. And those two movements are the Romantic movement and the Modernist movement. I'm sure you are well acquainted with the Romantic movement. It's a word that is still very much in our vocabulary. Modernist might be new to some of you. It's an important early 20th century uh, movements, especially in um, painting, uh, in architecture, in music, uh, you name it. Um, you, you could say that modernism was all about, or what, what they liked to do, the modernists, was they loved to take things apart. Old things, uh, old forms, things that they used to do in the past, they, they loved to take them apart and then put them back together uh, in an experimental way. Think Picasso. If there's one, um, one name you should uh, attach to the modernist movement, I suggest it's um, Pablo Picasso. So that's very much what he was about, uh, taking forms, old forms apart and doing something new with them, something experimental. By the way, I told you that uh, uh, Cummings himself was also uh, um, a painter. On the screen, you can see two of his paintings. One, uh, the one on the left, definitely modernist. The one on the right, you could say, again, sort of romantic. So also in his, in his paintings, he was somewhere in between. He, you could call him a romantic poet mainly because of his themes you could call him modernist mainly because of the form of his poetry and his themes are uh, mainly love think of the poem that i just read to you may i feel which is a sort of love um nature is another uh, um, important theme in cummings poetry and especially the combination of the two love and nature and, and how how the two interact. For instance, one of his um, favorite topics uh, um, is spring, the period where everything starts to grow again, to live again, uh, to, to, to be infused with new blood, newness, uh, uh, etc. He's modernist because 
as I said, modernists, what they like to do, they like to take stuff apart, put it back together, experiment with form, be it music or painting or words. So what he did was he, he loved to throw um, um, normal grammar and vocabulary overboard and um, start experimenting with new forms of language. He took words apart. He, he had his own grammar in his poetry. Um, he made his own words. Uh, I've um, printed a few um, examples on the screen, like girliest, whying, youthful. You see, he, he uses <clears throat> uh, some sort of lexical rules, but not in the correct way. No, it's the poetic way, it's his way. Um, that makes him very much a modernist. Also, that he likes to play with typography. Typography is basically the way the poet arranges words on the page. I'll give you an example straight away. Here we are. Um, one of Cummings' spring poems. Let me read it to you goes like this because it's spring things dare to do people and not the other way round because it's april lives lead their own persons instead of everybody else's but what's wholly marvelous my darling is that you and i are more than you and i because it's we there we are. Oh, sorry, that was a bit too fast. You can always um, stop the recording and read it again to figure out how it works. Sometimes he took his um, love for experimenting with the typography pretty far. Um, so it really became a, uh, the Picasso of poetry. For instance, with this beautiful diamond of a poem here we are now what i would suggest is that you stop the um the video here for a sec and try to figure out what is going on here so you can pause right now and figure it out we'll be back in a sec we're back so i'm sure you uh, figured it out this is um what you get just simply four words loneliness a leaf falls not spectacular poetry by any standards um i agree but if you compare the two versions so let's have the original one here on the right the um the the, the boring one uh on the left and let's compare the two for just a sec um and then we'll see what makes this this poem so good uh, first of all there's a there's a spatial element you you can practically see the leaf falling from the tree huh? an effect that is made even stronger by the um, white spaces in between the lines suggesting that th this falling of the leaf is not um is not a regular thing but it's just like a, a leaf in, in, in reality, it, it falls a bit slower, then it falls a bit faster, then it seems to float in the wind, and then finally it, it touches the ground. So there's this um, spatial element. There's also a temporal element. Whichever way you try it, you can only read this little poem slowly. And so that points to the slowness of the falling of the leaf. Um, but there's more. If you look at um, the way the word loneliness is um, taken apart, you can see that it uh, consists of the, the L, which really in the right font looks like a number one. And one, obviously, is, well, only one. Somebody who is only one is lonely. So it, it fits. Um, furthermore, you see that if you take it apart, modernist thing to do, take it apart like that, you see that the word one is uh, embedded in the word loneliness, which 
would not really um, uh, strike us, I think, when we read the word loneliness uh, in the normal way. Um, so there you are. There's, there's, a, there's a lot going on with just four words. And, and it's, like a, it's like a Japanese haiku. It's a, this Zen feeling, but with even fewer words. And that makes it, I would say, a masterpiece. Um, there we are. So his love for nature, his love for love, and his love for taking things apart. That's basically what a lot of poetry of E.E. E. Cummings is all about. I would like to end with a, um, another poem of his, a, a really beautiful poem. The um, One of the most beautiful poems that I know, and certainly perhaps the greatest love poem that I've ever read. And uh, it goes like this. Somewhere I have never traveled, gladly beyond any experience. Your eyes have their silence. In your most frail gesture are things which enclose me, or which I cannot touch because they are too near. Your slightest look will easily unclose me, though I have closed myself as fingers. You open always, petal by petal, myself, as spring opens, touching skillfully, mysteriously, her first rose. Or, if your wish be to close me, I and my life will shut very beautifully, suddenly, as when the heart of this flower imagines the snow carefully, everywhere descending. Nothing which we are to perceive in this world equals the power of your intense fragility, whose texture compels me with the color of its countries, rendering death and forever with each breathing. I do not know what it is about you that closes and opens. Only something in me understands that the voice of your eyes is deeper than all roses. Nobody, not even the rain, has such small hands. There we are. Let's uh, take ourselves through it stanza by stanza, just briefly. It's this place that, that his love takes him, this place where he's never been before. And uh, uh, that's where, that's the place that he meets when he looks into uh, her eyes, or when the lover looks into the eyes of the uh, the other one, whether it's he or she doesn't matter one little bit. Um, and and it's the the frail, the frail, small things that capture his um, his fascination, just like her slightest look that uncloses him, just like spring is able to open or unclose um, a rose, which is a mystery in itself, how spring is able to, to open a rose. That's how he says to the uh, loved one, that's how you unclose me, you open me every time again and again. Or the other way around, if you, if you want to close me, I'll close, just like snow does with that very same flower that was opened in spring. It's all about this, and this is a, this beautiful uh, opposition there, the power of your intense fragility. Um, this opposition between power and fragility is so beautiful and uh, it all comes together in the last stanza which i think is absolutely masterful i'll read it again if i may i do not know what it is about you that closes and opens only something in me understands the voice of your eyes is deeper than all roses nobody not even the rain has such small hands. That's a beautiful uh, little poem. Um, and especially this last part where he says, I have no idea 
what this magic of yours is, but it is there and it will be there forever.